What's going on guys? Chris back here at Rusty Ratchet. Sorry I was I took the week off. Didn't get you a video. Hope you're not mad. But uh today working on the Porsche B sheet. Yep, I hardly ever do any videos on this and uh I'm gonna do one today. The, it's windy out so you're probably gonna make noise. So uh I think my ordinator's taking a shit. Uh it's overcharging. It's putting out like 15.2 volts. Uh when I put my headlights on when the car is off, headlights are solid. They don't flicker, dim, bright, nothing. As soon as you start it up, headlights start flashing, like flickering. They don't go completely out, but they flicker. It's really annoying when you're driving. I'm probably super annoying when you're in getting hit with it in the mirror or whatever when i'm behind somebody but uh yeah so i got another alternator and uh i, I took it to two different places and they told me that my voltage or well, the alternator was good but i think the voltage regulator is going bad in it so uh i went to uh wrong auto and got me one hopefully it ain't wrong so uh let's get this thing popped up and uh, let me shut the door because pollen is blowing all over today it's a pollen type of day. So uh, I want to get this thing back on the road again. I can drive during the daytime, no problem. Just I don't really want to overcook my brand new $300 battery either. But, you know, it is what it is. So <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is pop the hood here. All right, guys. So uh, there's the alternator. I already had this off during the week. Uh, actually, last weekend I had it off. And I took it to two different places to get it tested. Like I said, both tested good. Uh, it took me about 15 minutes to get this off. It took me about an hour to put it back on because the bottom bolt that goes all the way through, I actually had to take my oil filter off to get it. So that I couldn't get my sausage fingers back there and hold the, uh, get the bolt started. So with that said, hopefully I don't have to do it again. And uh, I did put a brand new zip tie on there too. Good figure, now I gotta cut that off. Oh God, so I just got to crack that one loose and take the other one out and that will come off, belt slides off and you unplug it. So, but the fun part is, I'll show you. The Porsche Bishi. Everybody loves this car. Ah, it's already popped. That's right. So I had the battery charger in there. Look at all the pollen on it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's got a lake green, yellowish tint to it. So, there's my fuse box. This is my AC, and that's my heater, all in one. It works okay, the heat sucks. It doesn't get past 160 in the winter. I stick cardboard in there, I stick my front tag in there to block all the air and stuff. It doesn't get warm. But in the summertime, AC works pretty good, but it doesn't blow hard. It sucks. It's like a, a person with no teeth and shit trying to whistle, it ain't gonna happen. But, uh. So I gotta take these bolts off, disconnect them hoses, pull the thermostat thingy out, and then flip this over to get to the battery. Cause the battery is in a smuggler's box. Normally it's over there. Normally the stuff that's in a smuggler's box is uh, the AC condenser or evaporator, I'm sorry, the AC evaporator is normally in there or nothing at all with a hose for the drain for the fresh air box, which I don't have. But uh. Let me get this set up. We'll get that battery disconnected and we'll get this thing running. Right. All right, guys, so now you just get it and you just flip it up like that. And let me show you underneath here. So before I used to have one of them little mini batteries. I don't know if you're familiar with the Evo 8s and stuff like that. They got the little mini batteries, smaller than a friggin' lawnmower battery. But it had plenty of cranking power to start the motors without issues. But it was just a tight space. It was a pain in the ass. It's a lot harder than this. So what you do here, you move this, pick that up, boom, there's the battery. So I should have got a uh, cuddle switch and it would have been a lot easier. I would have to do all this. So I think I am going to buy one and hook that up. But now I just gotta get an Allen key and take that off and the battery's disconnected. So it's still a simple setup. And there's the uh, heater and air conditioning unit. Whoops. So uh, I'm gonna get back on time lapse. 
one more thing guys so what i also did i relocated the battery there and i there's a stud there i forget what that's for i'm like yeah so i cleaned it up and i put the new or the uh the negative cable on there well i was thinking well this all started afterwards so maybe that was my issue maybe it had a bad ground or something well then i got this four gauge cable and i hooked it up there with the battery one then i ran it to an actual ground over behind the uh my finger there down over there so i ran that cable there still the same issue so with that said we're going to go ahead to the back so we're going to uh loosen this up just a tad here that's good and we're going to loosen this one up couple turns that's all we need to do nothing crazy on this because so this here is the one I'm working on now is actually the tensioner so then when we get done this is actually going to come completely off so I just want to make things a lot easier I don't have a ratchet with me right now I got a loud truck I got wind blowing and um people are looking at me like I'm talking to myself in my driveway from the neighbors if they see me no they don't that's a school bus uh yeah, so I'm really hoping that this solves my problem. I don't know if you guys ever had a problem like that, but, you know, once you get a Frankenstein car like this, you don't know what kind of problems you're going to run into. So, but normally when lights flicker and dim and go brighter, it's normally something with the alternator or a bad ground. So, come on. I just really don't want to take everything off. It would be easier. It would be longer. It would be easier. I like doing it the fun way. So, see how that just comes up now. So, all you got to do tensions off it. Ah, it's still tight for my fingers. Yep. So, and uh, put you on time lapse. Well, guys, that might have been about a three second time lapse. So, uh, I'm gonna crawl underneath, and I don't need a, a jack or nothing. I can actually crawl under this Porsche and unplug everything and disconnect everything I need to. So uh, I'll bring you under. Just gotta go right here. There's the uh, nut right there. I had an old fram filter, not old, but came with the fucking oil I bought. So popped it on there. There's the bolt I gotta get to. Then that slides out that one there. Then I got the hot wire and the uh, other wire. So. These guys a little home in here. Gotta unplug that. Ah, come on. Unplug that. Disconnect that hot wire here. So I get a wrench on it. And like so, you had the wrench fall out of your hands a million times. Like I said, this isn't a hard job. The hardest part, like I said, is getting that bolt in there at the bottom. Or not bolt, the nut. The nut's a pain. Nuts can be pains. So basically, everything is disconnected now. I'll put that there so I lose it later. Now we get the last one off. Come on, I think my wrench is too big for this area. And it's like right where the coolant line is for the uh, turbo. So, I mean, once I break that loose, I can turn on my finger like I am. Somewhat. There we go. Uh, there we go. Just got to turn a little bit more. And then I'll probably lose it with the, on the engine block again. There's a lip where the oil pan goes. It, it likes to fall down in there. Uh, let's see here. Got it. Didn't lose it this time. But putting it on, I will because it's a lot harder. There's the washer. Right. 
Now I need two hands. Disconnect the belt. Get that out of the way here. Pull the this out. If you see it, I don't know. Then the alternator just comes out if it doesn't fall on your head. And with that, and with that. And boom, just like that, all meters out. Like I said, guys, it's really not that hard. So let's see what the wrong auto got me today. And yes, I did order an AC Delco alternator for my Mitsubishi motor. <laughs> I figure AC Delco makes better parts than all those other junk ones out there. At least it's made in Mexico, I think. It's still in North America. Everything looks right so far. You know, I'm boxing things in front of us. I really do. Yep, this is right. So, hold on one second. All right, so before I go do anything putting this in, I'm actually going to tighten this up. Uh, reason I'm going to tighten this up because I don't trust anybody putting this shit together. Uh, put a brand new AC Delco kit from a Weiss 55 Chevy to run her old engine on a serpentine belt for, or for like a 90 to 91 Camaros and shit like that. So we had it on there for probably a month. We drove it about three times in that month time. We were headed down to the beach and uh, this bolt decided to walk off and had to get towed home. So yeah, that kind of sucked. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and crank on that and tighten that up real quick. Cause I don't need it to happen again. All right, so here is the old one. And you'll see something funny. It worked, it lasted several years, about five years. <laughs> it's a car quest from Advanced Auto Parts. Hey, they had it the same day. So why am I gonna wait when I needed one? And then, like I said, AC Delco. Mitsubishi bat battery, Mitsubishi alternator from AC Delco. Ah, and I was right. It's made in North America, Mexico. So it's gotta be better than that one made in China, I think. I don't I don't know. But uh let me go ahead. Uh, that spacer. I'm gonna have to tap this inward that way. So just so I know we get in there. I think this is for a ground. I never used it. That one's still loose look. Turning it. This one's loose too. It's gonna stay that way. We'll see how long it takes for it to fall out and fall in there and short shit. So uh, let me tap this inward because I'm going to need to. Am I? No, I'm not. You know what? I'm going to leave it out because it's going to be easier to slide in there. That's what I'm going to do. So uh, let me get you guys set up again. So we'll get this tight. It's tight because it's spinning and burning my fingers. Burning the skin off my finger. See that slice there? Yeah, so I would say that's tight. All right, guys, so uh, watch me struggle here. Putting this in. Gotta spin this around real quick. Oopsie. Should have put it up there right the first time, but I didn't. Nope. There we go, that fell right in there. Now it's gonna take forever. Probably trying to line this puppy up like last time. Ha, huh, easy. That's why I didn't tap that piece in. Remember, I said, Oh, I'm gonna tap that in. I'm like, Nah, better not. Because I wouldn't have got that in there. So now the fun part is getting this washer in here you guys can't see and maybe now you can i don't know move that out of the way let me push it in a little bit more ah, come on slowly play with your fingers All right, slowly push it in. Don't want to go too far because then I can't get the bolt in there. And then magically, I'm gonna try and get 
that in there. Ooh, I might have got it the first try, guys. Hi, yes, I did. Holy shit. You guys are good luck. That's all right. I like that. You guys are all right. So, push that in all the way. Tighten it up the best I count my finger. Come on. Oh, uh, gunshots. I don't know what kind of hunting season's now in the spring. Ugh, that's whenever we live in the country. People shoot all over the place. All right, you guys are probably getting bored right about now. So, but it's almost there, I promise you. Just hang in there. Just a little bit longer. Maybe a commercial will come up. We'll get you a break. Maybe by the end of the commercial, I'll have it done. All right, so that's nice and snug now. I can uh, plug this in, because that's where that goes. So funny story about this plug. This harness is actually for an Evo 8. I originally had an Evo 8 engine in here, and I blew it up back in November of 2018. It was a horrible day. I was playing around doing zero to 60 times in 3.3 seconds. Yes, zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds. And that's what's spinning the wheels and hopping and bouncing all over the place. So uh, I got that and then had my old oil pan on there because I really didn't know much about uh, the oil pan swapping or modifications. And I was, every time I would launch the car, it would suck up air. Every time I would brake hard, the oil would slosh. I would suck up air. And that was basically every day of driving. But this one day, I was playing out my quarter mile time and zero to 60 time, mostly zero to 60. And then I heard knock, 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 knock. I wiped out all my main journals and all my rods got all wiped out. Only one was knocking now but they were scored bad. So I had this motor sitting around, freshly built. This one came out of a 99 Eclipse. And uh, this is a badass little motor too. It's all forged internals and everything else. And it's got a nice little high rev limiter. Uh, the other one was a stroker motor. So that had a lot of torque, a lot of torque. This has more of the top end. Uh, it's a 100 horsepower slower. So, uh, is up like that i'll tighten that when i'm done i gotta get that top one on there because i don't want this uh arcing on my uh wastegate so and uh so anyway what i was getting to the plug so this is a 2g uh mitsubishi eclipse motor the alternator is actually for a uh 97 98 gallant but they will fit in the 2G with the wiring harness and everything else. So I had to make a couple little modifications to uh, my coils. So I plugged this in because it was the same plug as the Evo 8 and everything else. Well, every time I put a brand new I, alternator, boom, dead. The one I got from the junkyard that came with the motor. So uh, then I bought a brand new one, boom, fried it. Returned that one, brand new one, boom, fried it. I was like, fuck. So then I started looking into it. Well, there's a wire that goes from here to the computer. I had to disconnect. I don't know what was going on, but once I disconnected that one wire that went to the computer to the alternator, everything's been fine since. And that's been, it's 18, what's that, five years? Going on six years now, yeah. So that lasted pretty good. But now I got a better, better alternator. It's a GM alternator, AC Duco, you know? So it should last better. So now let me go up top and uh tighten this up then we'll come back down i'll tighten up that tighten up that hook up the battery cable and let's see if these lights flicker so i put you back in the same place as you were before guys ah. come on
All right, guys, I'm gonna go underneath real quick. I'm gonna tighten up those two bolts, hook the belt up, and then we'll make sure everything's tight under here. Oh, this looks like gonna get ready to rain soon. Ah, all right, where are we at here? Let's put that there, put that on the crank. It's almost there now. Oh, wrong way I'm going. Damn, I gotta loosen that up. Holy shit. I realize I had it that tight down here. Alright, try this again. All right, let me loosen this one up now. There we go. I hate working on Corey Lane on my back. Ah, there we go. Nope, one more. Boom. Got it. There we go. That's that. That's locked into there. Let me uh, get this tightened up a little bit. A couple turns. That's all we should need. Nope, a little bit more. Just a little bit more now. tighten off and now we'll tighten this one up all right that's good and plenty there everything's clear I just gotta tighten that one All right, guys, so uh, alternator's in, it's tight. The only thing we got left is hook up the battery terminal, the negative cable, and then we got to put the AC unit back together. Now, the other issue I was having with this too, uh, the um, my OBD2. I've had two codes. One was for the crank sensor and the other one for the cam camshaft position sensor. Now, the crank sensor is brand new. That one there is, uh, I got that new because my harmonic balancer decided to fall apart. I never replaced it. It was one from the junkyard. It probably had a million miles on it at the time. But uh, when that fell apart, I did replace it. And then I had to replace the crank sensor again. So, and I also had to replace the bottom timing belt cover. But timing belt and everything was fine. So with that said, brand new one. And then I started, recently I started, basically after I replaced, relocated the battery. So I relocated the battery, and then I started getting the, the crank sensor and camshaft sen position sensor. So I'm like, well, crank sensor's brand new, it's only, I don't know, less than a year old. And the uh, camshaft sensor's leaking, maybe that's it, you know? So I bought a new one, popped it in, see it was leaking. Uh, I'm sure it's good because I still have the same codes. But then I was doing a little bit more research, uh, and everybody was saying, check your battery, check your battery. Not me, but other people, like in the Evos and stuff like that. So I'm thinking this voltage regulator must have something to do with it. Because as soon as I clear the code and start the car out, immediately it's back. So I'm hoping this fixes that too. That would be great. Car runs great. I have no issues with the car whatsoever. It fucking runs perfectly fine. It's a great beep. And uh, let's get this thing going.
All right, guys. Car is all done, as you see. I'm gonna clean this mess up. And then we're gonna start this puppy up and uh, see what's going on. So uh, I pop that in there. I did leave one of the bolts in under there, the new one. Yeah, well, I guess I'll have to get that in a second. Crawl back under the car. But there's a core on this alternator, but I think I'm gonna keep it. Uh, I'm gonna send it out and get it rebuilt. There's a place about 40 minutes away from me uh, that rebuilds them. So I have a brand new one that I fried, like I told you before. I didn't feel like taking that back. Uh, it's actually a Mitsubishi one. It's a little pricey. Not Porsche pricey, but Mitsubishi pricey. And uh, it was like 200 some dollars for it. That one on Rock Auto was 175 with a $43 core. But uh, yeah, so um, I'm gonna get them two rebuilt. That way I have them on hand if I ever need a one. If I go on a long trip like Route 66 or something like that, I'll bring one with me. Never know, you've seen how easy it is. I don't need a jack. So I just need a, <laughs> believe it or not, I need a 12 millimeter and a five millimeter. Uh, I need three tools. 11 millimeter to take off the AC box. I need a five millimeter Allen key to take off the uh, negative terminal. And a 12 millimeter for everything under there. That's it. So, and to remember to plug everything in. So uh, let me go look for that uh, nut so I can have that. And uh, we're gonna crank this up and see if these lights flicker. All right, guys, found my new nut. I used the old one. I don't know, because it was closest one towards me. So we'll put this in here. We'll put that new nut on there. And maybe one day next week, I'll take both of them to get fixed. And uh, I gotta get the keys. Great. All right, so I got the key. We'll put this down. Can't forget the razor blade. So I'll throw it on this motor with all the other 300 razor blades. At least I know where they're all at. And, uh, I got this box here from, can't call them wrong loaded today because so far they did right. Throw that in there, get rid of that later. And most important thing, let's see if these lights flicker. I hope not. I hope I fixed the problem. Because normally the alternator was a uh, 14.8 and 15.3 up in that area. So let me turn this around. We're going to see if we can fix the cure, have a cure. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't, doesn't do it. I'm turn the wheel a little bit.
guys inside the uh, 911 today uh, got the car cover on because it rained like yesterday so we're on a check for codes I'm gonna see if those two codes are on here and I know they're gonna be on here when I first test it then I'm gonna clear them start the car up and then we're gonna see what happens because normally it would come back immediately so uh let me plug this in real quick so that's where the 87 Porsche uh, 911 has their uh, OBD2 only if you have a uh, Mitsubishi motor. So let's uh, turn the key on, hit read. Let's see what we got. Should come up with two codes. Sometime today. Oh, eight codes. 0340, 0335, PO112, 500. 340, 335. And a couple of these are, are, I believe, are like AVS and transmission codes, which the 500, I believe, is a transmission code. So that's uh, nothing. I don't have to worry about that. So we're going to erase these. And then we're going to start this up. And we're going to see how many codes we get. Like I said, I immediately got them last time. Done. Okay, so let me unplug this. Put this in neutral. Don't want to roll forward because we won't be seeing where we're going. So we got that running. Give a couple seconds here. That should be enough. So let me uh, plug this in again. All right, that's plugged in. Scan. And hopefully it's clear. Come on. Say, wait, are, are there codes? I don't know. No link. What? Ah, it helps if I turn the key on. What an idiot. Complete moron. That's why I said no link. Four codes. Huh. 11 ready. 335 and 340. So it looks like it still has the codes. So uh, I don't know what it is. So... Well, that sucks. Well, I got one problem fixed. Maybe I'll get another one done. Come on. All right. Well, I tried. So uh, I'll have to look into that a little bit more and see what is going on with this damn thing. So uh, like I said, it's not hindering any of the performance of the vehicle whatsoever. So uh my buddy thinks it might have jumped the belt, but I highly doubt it because it's got great power and it's not breaking up. It's no misfires, nothing. Just two idiotic codes. So, and two brand new sensors. Is it possible one of the sensors failed? Yes, but why would it bring both of them on? So, I'll have to look into it and see what's going on. Till then. All right, guys, that's going to end it on this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, I'm glad I fixed my issue. Now I can drive my car and I'd be worried about getting stuck on the side of the road. So, with that said, I'm going to put the car cover on the car now. The video's over. So, uh, I should have another video out on the Camaro soon. And then after that, I will have one on the 911T. So, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And just keep an eye out for the videos. And, uh, again, see you guys on the next one.